Earnings, earnings, earnings. Boy, oh boy, I heard there were some earnings reports coming out today. I think you probably noticed, right? Boy, oh boy, what a day we had today. But of course, as always, we're only as good as our next opportunity. So of course, it's time to get back to work tonight, right? Another day in the rear view, another big opportunity setting up for tomorrow. And of course, it's Thursday evening. It's April the 25th, 2019. My name is Joseph, by the way. And this, of course, is your nightly newsletter. Now, don't forget, guys, I help new traders find predictable, dependable, reliable, usually profitable trading opportunities using a simple three-step trading strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. My job tonight is a little bit different. My job tonight is to find the best of the best setups, the best levels, the best opportunities we see setting up for tomorrow. That is a finally Friday, finally Friday edition, right, of our morning trade room. And tonight, we're gonna cover oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro in the video this evening. I'm gonna jump into oil here first tonight because oil, I, I, I wouldn't have believed it if we hadn't talked about it last night, but oil is right about ready to get that pendulum swing target we talked about in last night's video. So let's dive into that black gold, that's Texas T. Let's dive into that oil futures, oil futures here, first of all, here this evening. And of course, we're gonna see a lot of this here tonight, these big, 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 strong, strong moves here on the chart. As we mentioned last night on the video, we are battling through this time of the year, right? Earnings reports coming out, and we got a lot more to talk about regarding earnings for oil tomorrow, so we'll talk about that here a little bit more here in more detail. But for right now, though, we have a nice big bear market headed lower, obviously here, right? Nice big move down. And the most important thing that I always kind of think about anytime I see uh, anytime I see a strong move in one direction is we're probably going to get a second leg, right? And we're going to see a lot of this tonight on oil right now, strong move down. We're probably going to see a second leg lower here. Where that second leg is trying to go is probably going to be that big pendulum swing that I mentioned earlier, right? We had that big weekly trading range, and of course, we have that move up and that move back down. We'll talk about that target in more detail here as we go, but we're we're, we're knocking on the door right now, right? We're definitely knocking on that door, trying to get that final target down here at that 64, 63. So we know we're bearish. We know we have that nice, strong move down. So we should see a second leg now all I need is to find some levels of resistance that I can use for entry patterns. And of course, what I'm doing now is, you know me, I love me some hidden channels. I'm connecting these lows. I'm bringing up up to that high. Here's the giveaway, right? Grab that little midline. Yeah, beautiful channel there. I wanna sell off the top of that channel. And of course, I've got a beautiful little swing high up here to include with it. So I'm looking to sell up inside my battle zone. I've got three different entry patterns I'm gonna break down for you guys tonight. And of course, I would also be lying to you if I said I wasn't thinking about this being a possible reversal here as well, because let's not forget, this is, after all, one big range we're dealing with right now. So uh, we may definitely see this market pull back, right, back into that range. So, you know, how do you know, right? How do you, how do you know if it's going to go back into the range? And how do you know if it's going to stop and go lower? I'm going to talk about the most important clues I look for using a simple simple indicator to tell me whether or not we're going to go up and back down or if we're going up and continuing that move higher. So we'll talk about the buy side. We'll talk about the sell side. We'll talk about buy targets, sell targets in tonight's video. So if you're an oil trader, I hope you are, because we got some big news coming tomorrow for all you oil traders out there. You may not be aware of this. We're going to talk about that in more detail tonight on the video. So stay tuned on that for more. Boy, oh boy, that S&P today, holy, holy, lots of movement on the S&P. Again, we know what to blame, right? We had the had the earnings reports coming out in the pre-market this morning. We talked about that last night, right, on the newsletter. The bottom line, though, is the market goes down, it goes up, it goes back down. So how do you make sense of all of this? Well, there's one really important clue here, and that is the very beginning of today's trading session. What is that? Those are double tops, those are double bottoms. That creates a trading range. And of course, what do we always expect for a range? We expect one, 
two and back up into the range, right? That two try breakout. Now, obviously, that two try was extremely wild and crazy because, again, a lot of earning stuff coming out right in the pre market. But look what happens, right? They go right back up into that range again and they kick their feet up on the sofa and they get comfortable here, right? Back inside that range. So, as we kind of let the dust settle in the S&P, it's a bull market into a trading range. And the plan pretty much stays the same, right? When I have a bull market into a range, I'm looking for a very specific buy pattern here, right? Down inside that battle zone. I'm gonna use the range to find the battle zone. I'm gonna use these hidden channels, right? To find the battle zone. And so I definitely wanna be a buyer down here, but I hope you see it. Do you see it? You see it? What's that? That's a big, strong move. What do we expect with a big, strong move? What do we usually get when we get a big, strong move? We usually see a second leg, right? What do we get when we see a big, strong move? We usually see a second leg, right? So we know what to expect here right now. And I'm going to break down how I'm going to buy this market, right? And also, too, what it looks like to be a seller on this as well. Because, you know, for all I know, we could be headed back down to that 29.14 and a quarter tomorrow. So we got a range. It's a bull range strong bear move though, right? Bull range, strong bear move. Two forces working against each other. We're going to break down the entire plan on the E-mini here because we got some news coming out tomorrow morning for the E-minis. And then boy, oh boy, that NASDAQ. Oh my goodness. NASDAQ is in rare form, right? Rare form today. Again, we're all revolving around this range right now, right? Every, right? We're all revolving around that range here. Not a lot has changed here this entire week, really. Had that big move up, right, into that trading range, right? We go up, buyers fail, we come down. Sellers fail, we go up, buyers fail, comes down. So the plan pretty much stays the same here on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is pretty much the same plan. I've got falling resistance. I've got rising support. Call this a triangle, if you will. Call this a range, if you will. The market is moving sideways on the screen, which means I want to buy low. I want to sell high. And most importantly, I'm going to try to use that two try rule here as we go. So as we go lower, I'm trying to buy this market back up. But what do you see in the chart right now? Is there anything on this that stands out? Oh, absolutely. That big move lower, right? Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we usually get what? We usually get that second leg. So we know momentum is bearish right now. So we know that sellers are going to be trying to bury this thing down into that measured move here trying to finish off that pendulum swing like oil's doing right now. And of course, then we're trying to get this market back up into that range. I'm going to talk about three different patterns I'm looking for here to be a buyer off of that low because you don't want to just try to pick a bottom on this, right? Picking a bottom can be very difficult times. So we're going to look to buy those lows, sell those highs, avoid the middle. I'm going to break that entire strategy down for you guys, for all you NQ traders out there. And then how about that gold? So gold, boy, I mean, did this did this not just set up beautifully on gold, right? We talked about this last night, right? One, two, three, find the channel, find the, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, really? Draw the trend line down, up and over. Beautiful stuff, right? I mean, this is exactly what we had anticipated today. So once again, right, we've been on a, on a roll here this week for the yellow metal. If you're, a, if you're a gold trader like we are in our trade room, right, you are ready for the session here today. So two for two here, last two days, right, on the gold. Very well done on that. We got one, two, three big legs up on gold. And then what happens? Crash, right? Big crash back down in. Now, we talked about this, right? What do we usually see when we get a big, strong leg? Yeah, another leg lower, right? So we're expecting to see a little bit more momentum running lower here on the gold. And I hope we do, because in all honesty, it looks like if you look real closely here, right, we go up, down, up, down, right, up, down, right? I, I kind of warned you about this last night. I thought this might be a range, and it definitely is a trading range. Anytime I see a big move up, above that range, only to see it just sink right back down. This just screams of a pendulum swing. So I've got some nice juicy targets down there at 72-ish, right? The problem right now is, is I've got this range I've got to worry about. I'm looking to sell high here right now to finish off that second leg. And then I'm also looking to be a buyer right on the opposite side. So how do we sell it? How do we buy it? 
how do we avoid the middle? That is going to be the topic tonight on our video newsletter for gold. So make sure you stay tuned on that. We'll talk about the patterns we want to see on gold. And then euro, euro, euro. Boy, I'll tell you, this euro has been nothing but just sinking lower here. We talked about this last night. Strong moved down into what I anticipated to be a range. It was a range. What does range tell us to do? Ranges, of course, tell us to buy low. Ranges tell us to sell high. I want to buy low. I want to sell high whenever I see a trading range environment. So we know we have a range. I want to buy down here, right, going into that range. The problem is the market's what? Yeah, the market's not bullish. It's bearish. So I have a very specific set of buy patterns I'm watching down here. I don't just want to buy it because we're so bearish right now. There's a very specific buy pattern I'm looking for to buy off of that low. And then obviously we'll try to sell off that high, right? And we'll talk about a couple patterns to look for to sell off of that high. And maybe, just maybe, right, the dollar might react differently here tomorrow. We may see this thing reverse and we'll talk about what a breakout will look like and what a full-blown reversal might look like here as well on the euro. So we're going to talk about ranges. We'll talk about buying, selling, and reversal tonight on that mighty euro. So make sure you stay tuned on that. We have everything ready to rock and roll here. We've had a great week so far. Great nightly newsletter so far this week. we got one more day tomorrow. But before we jump into the charts, though, before we jump into all those charts and put the plan together for tomorrow, I want to make sure you never miss another great video. You know, right before I publish my newsletter video on my blog, I hit the send button on my email service and I send out an email to all of the people who are on our email list. Never any spam. I never rent that list. I, I, I hate that crap, right? And I know that you do as well. I know that you come to me for good, honest advice when it comes to finding reliable setups every day and I take that responsibility very seriously. So if you want to be on that list, if you want to make sure you're always the first one to get a heads up whenever we post something new because you know these patterns, they seem to set up a couple hours right after this video comes out. So you want to be on it, get your charts all ready to go. To make sure you never miss that email, join our mailing list. It's right on the homepage of the website or the blog. And all I need is your name, your email address, and then hit that subscribe now button. And then don't forget, when you subscribe to join our list, I'm going to send you a verification email. You've got to click that link to verify your email. That way I can keep sending those emails to you. So make sure you check your email. If it's not in your inbox, check your promotions folder in Gmail, check your spam folder and all the free email services. So make sure when you join our list, make sure you check your email, check your spam folder, because I'm going to send you the verification email. I'm also going to send you a welcome email with a bunch of goodies so you can get the most out of our time together every evening on this video newsletter. And then I need one more thing here of you guys. I need your help. I'm always, always trying to make this newsletter a better place to learn and earn, and I need your feedback. You know, what's your favorite market? What's your favorite setup? How do you use this newsletter? What do you think I should remove from this newsletter, right? What do you love? What do you hate? If you could, if you could make this newsletter just for you, what would that look like? Give me some comments. Give me some feedback. Drop me the feedback in the comment section below the video. I'd love to hear from you. It means the world to me, you guys. It's the time out of your day to give me your feedback. And while you're down there in the comment section, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're always posting tons of great videos each week. And give me a thumbs up on this video tonight if you like the video newsletter and you tune in every evening. And also, one last thing, don't forget, Please, please don't forget, you can always pick up the phone and call me anytime you have any questions. I realize, I realize that in today's world, most websites are chat bots and call centers, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a lonely old day trader. In fact, we're a small family-run business here in Los Angeles, right? We work out of our, our, our corporate headquarters with a small group of people here. Call us, right? We'll answer the call, answer all your questions, and help you get started on the right track. So pick up that phone. Give me a call anytime you have any questions about brokers, charts, data, trade room, anything we talk about tonight, right, on this nightly newsletter, all right? So make sure you join the mailing list. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. And please call me anytime you have any questions about anything that is trading related. All right.
Let's talk about some news for tomorrow. We have a lot more to cover tomorrow here. Tomorrow's the last day of the week and really the last Friday of the month of April. Now, don't forget, don't forget, anytime we talk about a Friday, Fridays are always going to be early in and early out. Okay, the reason why I say early in, early out, early out is the hard part on Fridays. I'm warning you right now, some of the worst losses that I've taken in my career happen afternoon on a Friday. It's usually because I'm either way up on the week or I'm way down on the week and I'm trying to either make up for lost money or I'm playing with house money. Be very careful of the, of the emotions, the psychology that happens at the end of the day on Friday, right? Our brains get flooded with endorphins on Friday afternoons, which make us feel you know, indestructible, right? They do. We feel good. We're the weekend coming up. We can have some fun this weekend. Whatever the case may be, it's very easy to make some very small mistakes that have big, big ramifications, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very common issue for traders to give back a lot of their hard work because they trade too late on a Friday. And on a late, on, you know, and again, the later you go on a Friday, the, the worse you get and the worse the markets get. Right? The later we get on a Friday, the more risk taking, right, type of style trading is involved, and the more we are susceptible to risk taking. So my my whole thing is on a Friday morning, I try to cut myself off after eleven o'clock. You know, I've got to really have a good reason to be trading after eleven AM just because I know I can't trust myself. Right? The the emotions are the big thing. And you combine that with all the other rookie traders in the market that don't know any better about Friday afternoons. The bottom line is hopefully there's hopefully there's no snow on the ground wherever you are right now. Hopefully if there is snow, it's getting less and less each day right now. So close it up at eleven o'clock, read your journal, update your track record. We have a whole ritual we follow every week in our trade room on Fridays and then get out of there, right? Something tells me you'll enjoy right, the time away from that desk. So early in, early out on Friday. Now, how about news tomorrow? What do we got tomorrow? The big headline news for the most part is the, is the first quarter GDP, right? So GDP tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern time. This is what most people are going to be seeing as the headline number tomorrow morning. What you wanna do is you wanna get to your desk early tomorrow get your charts all prepped up, you know, anything that changes overnight. Then news comes out at 8.30. By about 8.40, you should have a pretty good idea of how the market responded. The market will either be bullish, bearish, or neutral, sideways. Once we know how the market responds, bullish, bearish, or sideways, right, neutral, then we'll update our plan, update our strategy, and we'll execute together, right? Again, we open up our trade room and we trade together every morning at eight o'clock Eastern time. Now, the reason why I say most people will be watching that GDP is because there are some big earnings report tomorrow. Tomorrow, I believe it was Exxon. I believe it was, uh, who was the other... Uh, I, I, I can't recall the exact numbers, but we have a lot of oil companies, a lot of, a lot of energy companies, uh, obviously ExxonMobil. Oh gosh, I can't recall what it is right now. I'll, I'll get to that later on in the video tonight. But the bottom line is though, we have some major energy company earnings reports coming out tomorrow morning before the open. So if I had to guess tomorrow, I would say keep your eyes open on oil because oil, natural gas, any energy related futures instruments, right? Any stocks, anything that is related to energy is going to be on our radar right tomorrow morning. So obviously I'm an oil trader, love trading oil. Oil has potential to be a very, very active market tomorrow and combine that with the GDP number, we are looking forward to a great, great session in our trade room. And don't forget every morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, that's exactly the plan, right, is to, is to continue to update, reevaluate, and then execute the strategy together once we get together tomorrow morning. And then again, early in, right, early out for a Friday morning. All right, so now you guys on the plan for tomorrow. Early in, early out, 8.30 GDP, keep your eyes on those energies, right? Again, I like oil futures, right? And we'll start that way here tonight on this video newsletter. Real quick here, on the oil, taking a bird's eye view. Taking a, ver take a, take a bird's eye view here, earlier on this week on oil, big run up into a trading range. We run 
up above the range, the amount of the move above the range is oftentimes the amount of the move below the range. What do we call this? We call this the pendulum swing, right? The pendulum swings up, the pendulum swings down, right? You get the picture. So now we know we have a big pendulum swing target down around that 64 half area, 64, right, 63. So that's the big picture right now, right? The big picture says we know we have that big target down there at 64, right, 63. Now, Knowing that's where our target is, the other big variable right now is this trading range. Whenever we have a trading range environment, the plan is pretty simple. I want to buy low, I want to sell high, and I want to avoid the middle. So as the market goes higher, I want to sell high. Now the best pattern to do that is a one, two failure. Let the buyers try to break out once, let those pullback buyers buy the pullback, find the pain point, right, as we always say, and sell into the stops of those buyers. Same thing to the downside. Price goes lower, expect that second try, right? One, two, bears try once, breakout bears try, pullback bears try, we think about where's their pain point, and we buy into, right, we buy into that pain point. The bottom line is we're buying low, we're selling high, and we are by all means staying away from the middle of that trading range. So here we are now on oil, we've got this market now coming off the, right, coming off those highs, and you can see over and over again, right, one, two, back down again, one, two, back down again, right? Now, we're going lower. Right, so we're expecting to see one, two, right, and back up, right? Well, there's one key difference. Look back at these moves higher, and then look at comparison to this move down. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're relatively strong moves higher, right? But nothing in comparison to that move down right now. This move down recently is a very strong move down. And the one thing we know about strong moves, like I mentioned in the intro, is that whenever we see a strong move in one direction, we, we, we have to respect that momentum because we're probably going to see a second leg. So I know that I want to be a buyer eventually on this, but we should be able to get that second leg now, at the very least, back down to retest that low, and of course, at the very most, down to right that pendulum swing target. So right now, I want to be a seller to finish off that second leg, but at the same time though, I also want to keep in mind that we may end up getting that second leg and then running back in, or we may end up seeing that second leg try a couple times and fail, aha, and then we may see it run back up into that range. So what would the sell sides be and what would the buy sides be on this? Well, if I want to be a seller, I need resistance, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up that low. I'm going to line up that high. You can tell it's it's you can tell we're using it because that midline, the midline really loving on that midline right there. So the midline kind of confirms it for us. That gives me one level of resistance. Then I've got prior swings, right? Prior swing low, prior swing low. Those are what we call reversal lines, right? Those are prior levels of support, prior support level, sorry, prior resistance level right there. So now we know that area right here, that's a great spot. That's also right into the low of that range as well. So you combine all those levels right here and oh my goodness, right? What a great spot here to want to sell back down again. Now, what would that short trade look like? What type of pattern right, would that look like right now? So if we end up, right, let me zoom in this real quickly here. If we can get that pull back here, what would be some options to consider? Well, you can already almost see what's happening already. We went down, we went up, we went down. If we go back higher now, what's going to happen? Trend line. Now, this trend line is really what is standing between the buyers and sellers getting what they want out of this. You know, for example, to be a seller right now, I want to get below that trend line and use it as a level of resistance. So that's the easy, right? That's kind of the easiest way to think about, right, being a seller. Now, we may end up seeing here is, we may end up seeing this market, right, run up, moving average comes over, buyers try to buy the pullback here, right, and they fail. 
I would normally be looking for a sell with a buyer failure off the high of that channel. But because we have this potential trend line coming up right now, now what I do is go one step further, make sure we confirm it up and then over from there. So although I do want to sell into buyer failure, I'm concerned right now with this trend line coming up, right? This may lead into what I call a two-legged pullback pattern. So that's gonna be the sell that I'm watching for here right now, okay? Now, what if I'm wrong? What if the market keeps going lower, right? What if it keeps rolling lower here? Then what do we do? Well, at that point now, now we have to worry about that pendulum swing. What is the pendulum swing? It's major support, right? It's a big target, it's major support. So if I go lower and I'm worried now about selling low, I don't want to sell low, right? I don't want to sell into support. So what's the best pattern to sell without selling low? Trap patterns. Mark up those prior swings, combine that with the top of the channel, traps. Trap pattern, right, and selling off that high. We call those traps, right? They're above prior swings, trap setups. Pretty easy pattern there. So to be a seller right now, it's either going to be a two-legged pullback, up and over and in, or it's a let's keep going down, right? Trap and back down, right? Up off that high and back down from there, okay? Another potential here would be we roll lower, we go into a range down here. Don't be surprised if those earnings come out and we roll lower and go into a range. If we run lower into a range, then what? Then we go to try rule, right? One try, two try, failure back down, right? One try, two try. This is the same pattern we talked before, right? Buyers try once, buyers try twice, find their pain, and we're selling into their pain, right? So that's a simple way, three different ways to look for selling opportunities. Now, what about a buyer, right? What about buying this market? Because after all, we've got that big range here, right? Got that big range. How do we send this thing back into that range right now? To go back into that trading range, my goal is going to be to watch the moving average. The moving average, in, in my opinion, the moving average, in my opinion, is the most important clue here right now. So watching that moving average, what I'm watching for is if I want to be a buyer right now, Okay, here's how to tell if the buyers can take control. Look back up here. Look how the, look how the price jumps off that moving average, right? See what jumps up there? Okay, now look over here. Look what happens there. See how the market couldn't stay above the moving average, right? Price jumps off the moving average. Price sticks to the moving average. Does that make sense? Right? If I see, if I see the market, if I see the market jump off the moving average, right? Now we know we're not trying to be a seller on this. We know this momentum is now shifting. Okay, not to mention that trend line will be right there too. So it'll make it very difficult for these bears. Okay? But if we see the market stick to the moving average, stick to the moving average, right? If it doesn't jump, if it can't get away from the moving average, right? Now you know we're still a bear and wait for that two-legged pullback, right? Okay, so how do I buy it? What I need is, I need to see some movement higher here. Now, once we see the market, again, once we see it really jumping off that moving average now, now what I'm looking for now is, is what we call a two-try breakout. It's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a two-try seller failure. The bottom line is, I'm looking for the bears to try once to sell, bears to try twice to sell, once I see that jump above the moving average, that's going to be my clue now to shift from being a seller to now being a buyer. But now I've got to respect that strong momentum, right? Remember, that strong move down has not disappeared. We're going to still see sellers try once. We're going to probably see them try twice. And then once we exhaust those sellers, right? Once the bears have loaded the boat, once they've given up on that, then we can buy into that failure. Okay, so a lot of this has to do with the fact that, again, we've got that major range. We're anticipating to go back into that range. And to do that, I want to go up one, two, and then up, right? Again, jump off the moving average. Bears try once, bears try twice. Then I'm buying into their failure. We're literally buying right into those stops. Okay, or, or do we go up and stall? right? Do we go up and stall and stall, right? And stick to that moving average. In that case, right? We're looking for that next leg lower, 
And at that point now, we'll look for that, right? Again, that one, two, up and over and in, or, right, we roll lower, right, trap and sell from there. All right, guys? So now, if I can get this move, right, up and one, two, and back in, right, where's my target now? My target would easily be back up to retest the high of the range at 65.87, and of course, the high of that move from today at 66.28. Because we look at it, this could easily be a pendulum swing in itself, right? That could easily be a pendulum swing in itself right there as well. So it could easily be going right back up into that range here, and I'm waiting for what? It's how the market responds around that moving average. Does it jump or does it get stuck? Now, I wanna keep going with you guys, but I have so much more I wanna share. I do, I have so many more tricks up my sleeve, so many secrets that I've learned over the years. I don't have time to go over all of them right now in this video, because you can see I'm already half an hour into this thing right now. Most important thing though is, I've got a great free trading class I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner. I'll also put a big red button right below the video tonight on our blog. Join the free class. If you want a deeper dive into this entire trading strategy, if you want a deeper dive into all my favorite patterns, grab that free course. It's linked up in the video description. It's also below the video on our blog. In the meantime though, let's keep this party rolling. Got a lot more to cover here tonight. Like the S&P for one. S&P, of course, as I mentioned in the introduction today, started off this morning instead of a nice range, right? Now, anytime we see a market start off the day inside of a range, we know that the odds are very good that we end in that range, right? So it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's not a guarantee, but most of the time, when the day starts off with a, with, with a range, right? Double tops, double bottoms. When the day starts off in a range, it usually takes an act of God, right, for the market to break free and stay out of that range. And you can see, right, if there is a trading God up there, he, he or she was definitely putting their back into it today, right? Big strong move down. Anytime you see a strong move in one direction, what do you expect? A second leg, right? They got that second leg, and then sure enough, run, right, runs back higher here. You know, we talked about this this morning in our trade room. We say, you know what? I don't, care. I don't care how strong this move looks right now. We know that whenever a day begins to range, it almost always ends up back in the range. And there we are, right back into that range again. So now we have a bull market into a trading range, same, same trading range, by the way. And then now we're seeing the market pull back. So we already know, because we talked about this earlier, right? We already know that any time of a trading range, right? Any time of a trading range, what's the pattern? One try, two try, and up from there. So what's the, what's the concern? The concern is the strength of this move. We have to really respect the strength of that move, right? It's a very strong bear move down. So I've got my trading range. Take that trading range, the amount of the move, right? The amount of the range, copy and paste down, that creates support, copy and paste down, that creates support. So that's where I get these support levels. So we're right inside that battle zone, so to speak. Then I can also grab my higher highs up off that low and we're right at a hidden channel low as well. So beautiful levels of support here. At the same time, right, the same time here, we go up, we go back, we go up, we call these reversal lines. This is a great spot to be a buyer as well. So all kinds of levels that are stacked up right on top of each other. So I want to be a buyer. The only thing that I've got to worry about right now is I got to, I got to worry about this bearish momentum right now. So I want to be a buyer. Okay. What are some, what are some options that I can look for right now? So it really all depends on you guessed it, how the market responds around the moving average. So as we run lower here, I'm expecting to see the bears come in and try to sell right off that moving average. Okay, now this will really, this will very much tell me now, right, what I can do with this. There are basically three different types of scenarios that you wanna be watching. One is we go through the moving average, right? That obviously tells you we're, we're going back up and we're gonna plan for that. Two would be a move off, right? A move off the moving average. And the third one would be a strong move off the moving average. 
Okay, those are three scenarios you want to be watching for. Now, let's take the first one, right? We go down. I'm expecting now to see sellers try to sell off that moving average, okay? If they don't, and if this thing runs back higher here, you want to stay away from that range. If it runs back up, what's the best plan? The best plan is, like we saw back here, one, two, buy the second one right? Buy the second one. The second one is the one you want to look for, right? It's that one, it's that two. And what I'd like is, is a trap low on this to avoid the middle of that trading range. So if we go right through that moving average, okay, now we know we've got those, right, those bears and the ropes. The problem being though, we want to stay out of that range, right? I don't want to trade in the range. Okay, I want to trade outside the range. So I'll wait for the bears to try once, wait for them to try twice, and we'll run back up from there. Okay, that's obviously if we do just slice right through the moving average. Okay, the next scenario would be moving average comes over, right, and we see sellers try to sell off of it. If they try to sell off the moving average, but they don't just crush it, right, now we know where stops are, and we can buy right into those stops. So assuming the sellers don't take out the whooping stick, right, on that moving average and sell it off, right, we can then buy into their failure. And if we're lucky, we might be able to get it deep enough here to the point where we can take that failure into that pullback and then back up from there, right? So we might be able to get that failure pattern into that pullback pattern and then up into that range right from there, okay? Now, the third scenario, right? What if we won two and three, right? Then what do we do? If we hold that moving average and bam, right? Big breakdown, what is that called? It's called a one, two, three reversal, okay? Or in this case, a breakout, one, two, three breakout. Now what do we do? We know where the target is. It's back down to that low. Hurry up now, mark up that low, mark up that low, go up to that high up there, find that high, and that's your sweet spot now to be selling right up off of that high right it'll usually be below the moving average by that above the moving average by, by that time right and you'll be selling it off that high okay that's the trick if we do get it to run through right that will give the bears control mark up that low mark up that low find the high you'll notice i draw the high off of that major high up there right not this one right there right the major high up here and then of course looking to sell right off that high from there. Where's our target? Target's back to that 14 and a quarter. All right, guys? So we've now talked about three different scenarios here, right? One, if we jump back up, don't just buy it. One, two, trap and go. Do we one, two, failure and up? Or do we one, two, three, breakout? Mark up that new channel, right? And selling off that channel. We know what the target is for the downside. Where's my target for the upside? My buy target right now is definitely going to be that 2940 area. But obviously, with this big potential pendulum swing, we are looking at a potential runner target tomorrow at that 2950. Now, Fridays are always a big question mark as far as how far the markets will run. Sometimes on Fridays, the markets never stop and you're literally closing your position right at the closing bell. Sometimes the markets don't move much in the afternoon. So we don't know yet what that end of the day will look like tomorrow. But one thing's for sure, be very careful adding to positions after 11 o'clock. You're more than welcome to get in nice and long, right, nice and low and hold that runner, try to see much you can squeeze out of the rest of the day though but be careful in the afternoon because it is very illiquid filled with gamblers and bad and, and a bad mindset right on a friday afternoon so now we get a pretty good plan there on the s p how's the nasdaq doing though nasdaq was quite the quite the wild ride here um again as i mentioned before right we had that big move up right into that trading range okay what do ranges tell us Ranges tell us to buy low, right, and sell high using what? Use the two-try rule, right? We go one try. We go two try. Back up in, right? We go one try. We go two try. Back down in, right? Big strong move down. One try. Two try. Back up in. We go in. One try. Two try. Back down in. What do you think we're looking for tomorrow? What do you think? Take a, take a guess. I'm going to guess one try. Two try. You got it. Back up, right, into that trading range. Now, 
you guys are you guys are experts now on those on those three scenarios, right? So three different scenarios here or three ways to use the moving average, right, with this move. Because again, we have that strong move down. And anytime we see a strong move down, we have to respect that market's momentum. So for example, right, if we get that, if we get that move right back up into the range now, what do you look for? Look for those traps, right? Those one, those twos, right? Traps and go because you don't want to get caught trading in the middle of that range, right? You don't want to get caught trading in the middle of that range. So if we just run back higher here, which could easily happen, right? You're looking for that trap low, right? Let those bears, and you can see kind of something some similar to it, right? We run up, right? One, two, trap and go, right? That's what everyone's waiting for, right? It's that pattern. Okay, that pattern, again, right here. It's, again, because it runs back up, nobody wants to, nobody wants to trade the middle, right? So they try to avoid the middle by getting that trap. Same thing here. We go up, one, two, trap, and go. Okay, so if we blow right through that moving average, now you know what to look for. Okay, but what if we don't, right? What if we hold that moving average now? Let me zoom up closer here, right? So now we come over. Right, big move down, I would expect the bears to try to sell off of it, right? If they sell and they fail, yep, we're looking to buy right into that failure, one try, two try. But what if they, right, what if they keep it going though, right? What if it goes one, two, three, and this thing really runs? Then what do we do? Then we mark up that low, we mark up that low, that creates ultimately the initial line for that hidden channel now, bingo, and now we're looking to sell up in that sweet spot, right? Back down, right, as we go. All right, guys? Also, too, don't forget, if we keep going here, right? If we if we keep going here, okay? If this thing just keeps on rolling, right, as we go, then what can I do? So let's say we don't pull back here and get it, right? Let's say it just keeps on rolling. Then what do we do? Well, at that point now, that momentum is really, really strong, right? So if we end up all the way down to that 77.70, right? 77.67 area down here, right? If this thing just keeps on running lower, I still want to be a buyer as we go. But what I'll do is I'll shift to a slightly more conservative pattern, right? If I can get a, if I can get a pattern right here, I'll grab that one. Right? But if this thing keeps on running lower here, I'm going to look for that nested failure pattern. Let the bears try once, let them try twice, right? and then we'll, we'll buy into their failure. Right? So imagine now, right? imagine we run lower, we're right at this major support zone, right? this major support zone below the low of the range. I want to buy the low of the range now, going back into that range, but that momentum is too strong. We know we're probably going to get that second leg right? I can wait for the second leg or I'm looking for that nested failure pattern, the one, right? The two, let the bears try it once, let them try it twice, right? And then we'll buy right into those failures as we go. So the NASDAQ right now, we are very much a range bound market, much like on oil, we're anticipating these bears are going to try to finish off this pendulum swing, right? The amount of the move above is the amount of the move below. So we definitely have our eyes on this area down here. But at the same time though, I've got trend lines coming down, trend lines coming up. It's definitely a triangle type of structure right now. So we may not get that pendulum swing, right? We just may not, right? We, we may only get, like I mentioned, it may go straight back in, one, two, trap and go or it may one, two, failure back in, or of course, it may keep going here, right? Nested, one, two, and then back up we go. Or who knows, right? Maybe it holds the pullback, runs, and we have a breakout now. I'll gladly sell the top of that channel. I just need to see proof, right? I just gotta see proof, hold the pullback, okay? Now remember, there's a very big difference between straight down or one, two, three down. There's a very big difference there, right? See, we see these big moves all the time in ranges. It doesn't mean the market's now a breakout, right? But if it goes one, two, three, right? If this holds that pullback and goes, this is a very different story now. So if we run lower, it's not a breakout. It hasn't confirmed the pullback yet. So we let them try once, twice, and buy back up. However, if they pull back right now, hold the pullback and run, that is a breakout. They've proven it to us by holding that pullback. See, holding the pullback's the hard part, 
right? The strong move down is the easy part. Holding the pullback, holding that original pullback is the hard part. Because as you can see, holding the pullback is not easy around the edges of the ranges. Okay, so there are some scenarios to watch for here tomorrow on that NASDAQ. And again, remember, one of the one of the most common problems we see among ranges, and this took me so long to learn. This is exactly why, honestly, why I have a morning ritual every morning. And as part of that morning ritual, I go over all of my rules. We'll do it together tomorrow morning as well. One of the most common little mistakes that I made when I was a rookie was I would take those one, two patterns right inside the range, right? I'd be buying, but I'd be buying it right where? Right in the middle. You know what I mean? That's, you, you, you might get lucky on that once in a while, but a lot of times that will kick right back out, stop you out just to run right back into that range again. So what you want to do is you want to avoid, right, avoid those trades inside the range, get us out of that range, right, and then back in. That's a much better risk-reward ratio. You're not trading the middle. And that's kind of the concern we have right now in the NASDAQ, right? That's why I say if it runs up, you want to get that trap, right? You don't want to buy inside that range. Because it'll kick you right out, right? So get that trap low. That's why it's good we get a strong move down. Hopefully it keeps going and we can buy that low like that. Okay, we'll break this down in a lot more detail here tomorrow morning in our trade room, obviously. Let's keep moving. How about some gold? How about some gold right now? Looking at gold here. Now, gold, obviously, big three-legged move. One, two three right and comes crashing back down we talked about this in the introduction a strong move in one direction what usually happens we usually get a second leg through now knowing that we also have a trading range this is a sneaky one we talked about this briefly last night on the newsletter right it looked like that might be a range right there and sure enough it is, right? We go we go up, down, up, down. We broke out, but you notice they came right back in and got all right comfortable inside that range. That is a trading range, okay? We take the amount of the move above the range, move below the range. There's my big target now on that pendulum swing, right? So 72, right, 84 down to 72.1. That is the big objective for those sellers. So that's where we think these bears are going. Now, one of the most important things we need to think about now is, is what is the momentum in the market? Because I'm sure a lot of people right now are looking at this saying this is a, this is a bull market, right? It is overall a bull market. The problem, though, is, is that is a very strong pullback. And you've got to respect the strength of that move. Anytime I see a strong move like that, I'm expecting to see a second leg. So I don't want to be a buyer on this just because it's a overall bull market. The short-term trend is bearish. This is where I remind you, you have to make a choice. Are you a short-term trader or are you a long-term trader? If you're a long-term trader, then you're waiting for this market to get back to being a buy, right? But if you're a short-term trader, if you're a day trader, by definition, you're a short-term trader. So all that matters to you as a short-term trader is the short-term momentum, right? Because how many times did we see a long-term bull market that goes three or four days down? And what are you going to do, sit there and wait? You want to make some money on the way down, right? So even though we're long-term bullish, short-term trading, go with the short-term momentum in the market and, and be very careful. Don't cloud your judgment by using longer-term time frames, right? You'll notice I'm only using one chart for this. You don't need a daily chart on this unless you're a daily chart trader, right? So you, can, you want to use whatever chart time frame you're going to be using to make decisions, you want to make sure you use those right for your analysis as well. Okay, bottom line is short-term momentum is bearish right now. I want to be a seller, right? Now, I would anticipate you're going to see some buyers trying to buy this, right? Now, where would I try to buy this if I was a bull? If I was a bull, what I would do is I'd probably look for something like this, right? Where it goes above the moving average, and the buyers sort of buy that first pullback, right? If I was, you know, back back 10 years ago, back when uh, those old uh, moving average cross strategies used to work, right? That's what it would be, right? There'd be like a, a 50 moving average, right? A 20 moving average, right? When they cross, you go above it and buy that pullback. So I would imagine that's what a lot of buyers are going to be watching for tomorrow. 
okay? So I know the buyers have potential, but they're definitely not in control right now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm looking to sell into that failure, right? I wanna see these buyers try to buy that pullback so I can then sell right into those stops, right? This is that failure pattern that we talk a lot about inside that free course, right? The free course, again, linked up in the upper right-hand corner or down that big red button below the video tonight. Okay, so again, that's the idea, right? The idea is, is let those buyers jump up. That's one. Let them try to buy the pullback. That's two. This is that two-try failure pattern, right? That two-try failure. This pattern works the same way going against the trend or going with the trend, sorry. Bull market, right? One try, two try, buying back up right? Bull market, one try, two try, buying back up, same thing, right? So, so bear market now, bulls go up, buyers try to buy it, we know where their pain is, and we're selling right into that pain, okay? Now, what if we go lower here? If it keeps going lower, what's the problem if it goes lower? We're inside the range now. Remember, we don't want to trade inside the range, so what's the best strategy? If we go lower, what I'll do is I'll mark up these lows, up to that high, uh-huh, you got it. Up, failure, and back down. Stay away from that middle. You see what I'm doing right here, right? If it wants to keep going lower, if it wants to keep going lower, don't chase it, okay? Think like a professional. Professionals will wait for the pullbacks, right? Drop that low, up to that high, that creates a channel. Up, trap pattern, right, trap pattern failure pattern, whatever we get up above that high. Again, stay away from the middle of that range, especially this range. It's very, very narrow. Okay, so those are two different sell, right, two different sell patterns I'm watching for. Now, what would be a buy side right now? Two ways to be a buyer, right? Two ways to be a buyer. Okay, let's say you disagree with me on this. Strong move up. Buyers want to go back to retest the high. Perfectly valid to say that. Okay, I think this bear move negates it, but Hey, if you think, hey, big bull move up, I want to be a buyer, what's the best way to buy this? The best way to buy this would be to let the sellers try once, twice, and buy into their second, okay? That's always the most reliable way to do it because as you try to go higher, the buyers aren't, right, the, sorry, the sellers aren't going to try once and give up most likely, just bearish, right? They'll try again. Once they try once, they try twice, yeah. Then all the bears are in now, and now I can be a buyer as we go. And remember, watch the moving average, right? Watch that moving average. If this thing, if this thing jumps off the moving average here now, right? If we jump above the moving average, now you know the bears probably have lost it. So one, two, up we go from there, right? But if we can barely get off that moving average, if we can barely get off of it, right? Yeah, that's not a bull market, right? If they get stuck to that moving average, now you know it's a sell going right back down in, right? And again, if it goes lower. Now, so if we jump up one, two, and then up from there, target back to retest the high, what about if the market drops? How do we buy it back up? If the market drops, like it definitely could, right? If we end up going up and then back down or market just drops like this, the problem is we're below the range. I want to be a buyer, but what's the problem? Momentum. Momentum is way too bearish. So what do we do in that situation? I don't want to just buy it. I give the bears one shot. I give them two shots. You got it, right? Let them try once. Let them try twice. Again, this is if we get this big drop down, right? Big drop down, big momentum move down. Now, once, twice, Make sure it's clear there are two attempts here, right? You'll be able to see it, okay? It's, it's usually pretty easy to see when you're doing it the right way. All right, guys? Let me be buying it, right? Buying it now back up, okay, into that range. Buy low, sell high. Be very careful buying as the market goes higher right now unless you see what? Unless you see that strong punch right above the moving average. And then last but not least here over on the euro, we kind of got what we talked about last night. It was a strong move down. I was anticipating a range, and that's exactly what we got today. We also got a very low volume today on that euro. You can definitely tell the dollar is taking, is, is kind of stealing the thunder right of this euro right now. But the bottom line is, 
is that we have this trading range and we know that we want to buy low we want to sell high we also know we have the amount of the move above the range sorry the amount move below the range to the high of the range so we kind of know where these guys are trying to get right they're trying to get up to that right 12 400 area right give or take a few pennies there and then of course we'll try to sell it back down again now we are bearish right now right we are bearish right now how do i sell sorry how do i buy in a bear market right how do we buy in a bear market what i want is i want to see one i want to see two and buy into their stops right one and two and buy into it i also do not want to trade the inside the range right so if we go up you make sure you go one Two, get outside that range, right? Get outside that range. Two tries, get outside that range. You don't want to be trading inside that range. Okay, so scenario number one is it's a one try, it's a two try, get those bears a try twice. You really got to be careful with the euro right now because remember the dollar is strong right now after a lot of fundamental changes earlier this week to these markets. That strong dollar continues to drown this euro lower. So be very careful trying to pick bottoms on this euro. Bottom pickers are not happy campers right now on the euro. So make sure you really wait for those bears. Try once. We've already got the first try. Waiting for them to try again. And then we can be a buyer here going back up into that trading range. If we shoot higher now, end up back inside the range for a bit, just wait for that one, that two, and go from there, right? One and two and up from there, right? Same basic idea. So if we don't get the two tries off the bat, we go back into the range, one and two, okay? Or we go up, get the pendulum swing, now what? Now we've got a lot of momentum going higher here. What's the sell? Momentum is the problem, right? Momentum is the problem. So we want to go one, two, back down again, right? That's, that is the problem with the pendulum swing, right? The pendulum swing is great for a great big target, but because that pendulum will swing so far in this, it's just, it's not easy to get a market like that to turn right around, right? Because anytime you see a strong move in one direction, you're going to probably see a second leg, right? So we run up, one, two, buyers try once, buyers try twice, and we drop it back in, right? We're selling back into that range. Or, right, or it goes up, we hold, and we go, right? If we get this thing to go one, two, three, or even like this, one, two, three, what is that? That's a one, two, three reversal. Mark up that high, mark up that low, find that hidden channel, and we're buying off of that low. So it's a, it's a, a relatively simple idea here. The key is momentum is bearish. We're below a range, right? The best way to buy in a bear market is going to be let them try once, let them try twice, and buy into their failure. It's the only safe way to do it. Okay, and you probably have already learned that or else you probably wouldn't be watching this video right now, right? Trading isn't as easy as buying at support and selling at resistance. It, it, does, it does boil down to that, but what it really should say is it's buy, what, what trading really is, it's buying at support, selling at resistance with the filter being the momentum in the market, right? How strong is the momentum before we get to that support and resistance? Because that will tell me which type of pattern, if any, I should be using at that time. So because the bears have momentum on their side right now, we want to give them a couple tries before we try to buy this. And if you're a fundamental guy or gal, look at the dollar right now. The dollar is very, very strong right now, which is causing this euro right to really run lower, which is why I caution you against trying to pick a bottom right now on this market because they've been trying to pick bottoms since 15,000 right on this on this euro. So that's where to do it. Or we go up into the range, we chop around in the middle. Stay away, stay away, one, two, back down, right? Or go back into a range, right? One, two, and back down, right? So buyers try once, buyers try twice. The only worry that we have here is, is the run, right? That big, big run. If we get that run, then momentum is too strong. One, two, back down we go. Or one, two, three, pull back, mark up that high, mark up that low, mark up the sweet spot now 
And now we're looking to, right, to grab that sweet spot. All right, guys. Excellent, excellent chart here on the Euro. Hopefully tomorrow is a day with some more volume for all you 6E traders out there. And boy, oh boy, tomorrow, another day of earnings, earnings, earnings. And again, like I mentioned before, we get those big energy markets, right, or, or big energy companies tomorrow, ExxonMobil, Chevron, right, all reporting tomorrow morning before the open. So we might have a very, very busy day here for all the crude oil traders out there. And as always, don't forget, we trade this strategy together every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room, right below me tonight on the video, you'll find a big button for our advanced classes, right? Grab that advanced course that includes our trade room. We've got great flexible payment options going right now into the end of the month of April and some extra bonuses for all you, all you new clients out there. So make sure you keep in touch with us for the bonuses. And if you're not ready for membership yet, if you want to learn more, if you want to come out and experience what we're all about before you get started, I don't blame you, right? Grab that free trial. Right to the left of my ugly mug, that big red button that says free trial. The free trial includes the free course. It includes your invite to our trade room. And of course, it also includes great bonus material from our members section, which everybody loves. Don't forget though too, when you join the mailing list, when you join the free trial, check your spam folder, check your inbox. There's a verification email in there for you with all the goodies. So dig around for it if you don't see it. And if you have any questions about this stuff, give me a call, right? Send me an email. Let me know how I can help, right, to get you started. We have helped so many tens of thousands of people here at School of Trade, and I hope I see you there with me tomorrow morning in our trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. But for now, time to get some rest out there. Time to get some rest out there. Boy, a little break in the action. No more game sevens tonight here. I need some sleep. It's been a busy week this week. Hope you guys had a great week out there. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hope to see you there. If not, we'll see you guys same time, same place in the next edition of our nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.